three of you today, right? Yes, three of us today. Excellent. Thank you. This way? Thank you. There we go. And one of our students will be right with you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Then we got three daily entrees. One short rib. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Julian. Yes. Let's start with a happy moment. When did you decide to cook? When did I decide to cook? Mm. Oh, that was way back in a Yorkshire mining town in England. My mom is the mother of five boys. And back then, as an English mom in a Yorkshire town, you are the matriarch of a family and you cook an evening meal every night. And then Sunday nights were buffet nights. But the spread was not just for mom, dad, and my four brothers. That's when aunties and uncles would visit, and we'd have roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, full veg, absolutely everything. And seeing that spread and how she cooked every day, I loved it. You know, I loved it. It, it looked like crap, but I loved it, and I loved the flavors of it, and I was impressed how she did it. But I couldn't do it in high school. Because, I, you know, back then it was a small mining town. Uh, boys didn't do cooking, so I tried got beaten up a little bit and then went to woodwork. Then the city nearest our, our local village opened its very first culinary school. And because I didn't do cooking in high school, I couldn't go to the culinary school because you had to do cooking in high school to get into the culinary school. So I applied and applied and applied. They said no and I applied and I applied and I applied. And then two months into they accepted me into the program, probably till I shut up. And that set me off on my career. Was that a good thing because there are many big names out there that said they learned through the hard way they learned through a mentor they learned through starting with dishes and working their way through and and have the battle scars to tell that is this an easy way to start in the industry 50 percent of the industry do the street smarts you know work your way through and it's brilliant because it is a it's a craft it's an apprentice craft too where you get to learn your craft learn your craft 50 percent go to school now i'm the big fan of going to school and here's why you have to be careful who you train on. Some chefs are tied on budget, tied on labor, and will only teach you the menu that you're cooking, rather than teaching you a skill set, you know. Instead of buying whole chickens that you can break apart, they're worried about food costs and will only buy chicken breasts. So I have chefs out there who are amazing. I've never butchered a chicken in their entire lives. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. So I went to school for two years. I, I'm fascinated by the science of food. I'm just fascinated why food does certain things, rather than saying, you know, you need to sear a steak to, to keep in the juices. That's BS. That's all, you know. So it's all about the Maillard effect and the caramelization of the protein and the caramelization of the sugars. And that fascinates me. So it's actually brought me here where I am today to teach at a culinary school because I love science of food and why things do things. Some might argue that if you haven't done hard yards, you haven't really learned yet. I teach my students here that we're gonna give you the foundation. You're the base of a pyramid, and it's time to go and build your pyramid. And if you grow too fast, you know, you're not gonna learn from other people's mistakes, which is life, right? You learn from other people. You learn what they do well, and you learn what they do poorly. And that's gonna make you even more successful in life. It's not a race first to the finish line. My wife used to say it's how you get to the finish line that matters. When did you make the transition between being an awesome chef and being an educator? When did it click for you? A friend of mine, a gentleman called Adam Busby, was teaching at a school called De Brule. He contacted me and said, Julian, you like to talk. Julian, you know food. I love food, I have a passion for food. Do you want to come and teach? I wasn't sure. So he said, okay, I'm gonna give you a lecture on lamb. There'll be 30 students in the lecture room. You can talk about lamb for 30 minutes. An hour and a half later, I'm still talking about lamb, and how beautiful lamb is, and the process of lamb, and how to cook lamb, and the best cut of meat on a lamb is the neck. And the neck's the best part, better than rack of lamb or anything else. Eat the neck. You know, you see the look on their faces and people are interested and they want to learn and they want to know more and it was like something, a bug had bitten me. This is my morning routine. It's important to say... Morning, everybody! Morning, chef! Morning, chef! What are you making today? Carpaccio! Yeah. Who's never eaten carpaccio before? Hands up! Oh. Oh. You don't enjoy it? So which way is yours? Which one's yours? That one? Oh, good. Are you gonna make him eat one piece of carpaccio though? He has to eat one piece of yes. raw. You have to do one. Alright. Deal? Yes, Alright, good. You can teach someone with a recipe, but if you're chained to that recipe, then you're just gonna be a cook for your whole life. But if you understand the science behind it, if you understand what's going on with the food, then that's when you can become a chef. 
You've got to be able to walk before you can run. And I think learning those fundamental techniques, those basic knife skills and good attitude and a work ethic is the most important thing. Really for pastries and baking is you've got to have a very artistic side to you and then you also have to have a very scientific side to you. Well, we're in the training kitchen here, so our program is six months long, three months in this kitchen, and then they move into the advanced kitchen for three months, which at that point, being able to put what they've learned here into application, move it for sale, be humble and happy about you know someone eating that beautiful cake on a Friday night with their family, can't go wrong, right? You probably have these two competing interests all the time. On the one side, you're running a business, you have to get students going through, the industry is changing. On the other side, you have this passion for food and creativity, and sometimes that's not good business. You see this restaurant, I'm making the restaurant even smaller. I'm taking it down to 40 seats, so we can really control on the educational component. The restaurant sales are not important to me at all. It's about having that experience of a restaurant, so that when these guys graduate, they don't have an ego, but they're comfortable around a restaurant. Even serving front of house is super important, as well as back of house. Because most people say, I want to own a restaurant, but no one gives restaurant training. And so it's like only yeah. learning 50% of this industry. I've now made the wine program mandatory in the curriculum. So when students do the culinary program, they have to do a wine course. As we look at our curriculum, and we have pastry programs, culinary programs, food and beverage, we need to look at other avenues. <laughs> The opportunities for people in the food business now. An industry which is always labor starved, yet the quality of candidates that enter the industry seems to be completely disconnected. On the one side you've got the glamour, on the other side you've got the, you've got the midnight slog that goes on. Where's the disconnect? People graduate from culinary school and think they know it all and they can walk into a kitchen and then they get scared and they don't know what to do. It's about initiative, it's about asking the right questions and getting deep into it. And that's what it's about, and that's what our students do. The industry is a mess, there's no question. The labor shortage is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. As long as they're breathing, I'm gonna hire somebody. And the problem is that's killing the industry. Restaurants are going down to five days a week instead of seven days a week because they can't get the labor force. Restaurants are minimizing their menu because they're getting these people who have no skill set, who want to go into cooking, but the chefs, because they're so short of labor, don't have time to train them. So the common school graduate is becoming more and more valuable. We talk about career paths, because your career paths could be, so long as you have a good foundation of skill, you can go work on a yacht. You can work on the giant cruise ships, which is a fantastic experience. So people come through school to appreciate good food and everything else. So it's an industry of hospitality with many avenues. So if you don't want to go and find dining, you don't want to go to the hotels, you have many different options. Maybe you just want to open a bed and breakfast. That's the fantastic thing. With the food industry, there's always a backup plan because you always have options. How many people do you have from other countries here? The student base varies. So it's probably 40% international, 60% Canadian. I like that math. We have an one language rule. It doesn't matter where people come from, we're all the same and we all teach the same curriculum. Diversity in the kitchens is really important though because we pull from that sometimes too. So if you come from Canmore, Alberta and there's this brilliant recipe and how to cure beef, I'll bring that into the kitchen because that's part of who you are and your culture and we'd share that with the class. We also have something called family meal every day and I really encourage them, show us who you are, show us where you're from and I don't care if you're from Korea or from Mexico or from Saskatchewan, that's a chance for them to be creative and really show us a little bit of who they are as a cook. Matthew, where are you from? Oh, Philippines. Some people go that way to go and learn how to cook because when you're an Asian, cooking is completely different. Is this uh, is a lot for you to learn here? I don't want to stick to Philippine ingredients, I want to ex explore the world. Tell me about your dish, what are you making? Uh, it's pork belly with all the Chinese uh, flavors in it. And I'm going to uh, spray it for two hours, three hours. We are going to start doing chocolate and I'm going to start doing it because I love it. <laughs> You're doing chocolate? Yeah. And Mexico is the right place to do, to yeah. do chocolate. It's a little warm though. Yeah. A lot of the elements here in the diploma program, especially in the advanced side, you know, you're not just doing something from start to finish. You know, I could be starting the dough for the pie, someone else could be doing the filling, and then a third person could be baking it off, finishing it, and decorating it. So there's accountability and responsibility in all of those aspects to, you know, create a final finished perfect product for a customer. Um, so you really learn how to work together as a team to make sure you all deliver your very best. And three entrees daily.
little bit of advice for the industry from your experience. I try and tell everyone in the industry, even though I'm teaching, I'm a working chef. I'm the first one that's in there. I'm the first one that grabs them up. I'm the first one that, that something's going wrong with a student, I'm there to catch them, even though there's faculty within the kitchen, right? And, and that's part of who I am. That needs to happen in the industry. You have these restaurants and they have the executive chef and all of a sudden just lose, leaves the line. It's more fascinated by paperwork and ordering and systems and tools that mean nothing. It actually means nothing. You're the chef of that restaurant, your name's on the door, be in the restaurant. It's a working crap, it's a working industry and work. And your team will work so much harder for you if they see you cooking alongside with them, peeling potatoes with them, chopping onions for them, they're making a stew and they're done with the pot, you wash the bloody pot for once. And that'll be magical. The Julian's happy place, what is it? Is it, is it that lamb you were telling me about? Or is it a, a pastry or an ice cream? And so many people are fascinated on eating out. And I'm talking about my own industry where I want people to eat out. Uh, but cook at home and eat at a dinner table is my happy place. <laughs>